Welcome to In 5 Minutes. The agenda of this clip is to understand channel length modulation. We have already seen the basic conceptual understanding of channel length modulation. In this clip, we are trying to understand what will be the effect of channel length modulation on my drain current or ID. Let's quickly get started with a very straightforward cross-sectional view of my NMOS transistor where my source and body both are grounded. This both are grounded means there will be no substrate bias effect or no body effect because both of them are connected to the same terminal. My VGS and VDS are external voltages. My VGS is greater than VTO. It's not a no remember, it's VT0. Zero. zero means zero substrate bias effect. That means source and body both are connected to the same potential. Because my VGS is greater than VT, my inversion layer is formed. We can see the inversion layer present here. And this is nothing but the one which have I've drawn with a pink color. It's nothing but the depletion region around the drain and my source. Now, we need to find out the effect of channel and modulation on current ID. Before we do that, we need to take certain parameters into consideration and that is nothing but finding out the channel voltage through which we'll find out the charge on the channel and we'll see even when saturation takes place, how does ID flows and due to channel and modulation, what eventually happens to ID. So for that, I've written a new term here, which is nothing but VC, voltage of the channel, with respect to the coordinate Y. This is Y equal to zero, and this is Y equal to L, and this is the place where my channel will be formed. So I'm going to write the voltage of my channel with respect to source as VC bracket Y. Y can get different values from zero to L. I'll also make an assumption that the entire channel, I will have a threshold voltage which will be nearly constant. Technically, it's not to be, but here as an assumption, I will assume it to be that way. So with that in mind, what we need to understand is two boundary conditions. Boundary conditions is nothing but VCY when Y is equal to zero and VCY when Y is equal to L. So VCY equal to zero at source at source the channel voltage is going to be nothing but Vs which is nothing but 0 so is equal to 0. At drain y equal to L it's at drain Vc equal to is nothing but drain voltage but I can easily say drain voltage is nothing but Vds because Vds is nothing but Vd minus Vs and source is 0 so it's nothing but Vd. So these are my two boundary conditions and the last thing which we need to keep in mind is there are two electric fields in a MOSFET. One is this lateral electric field which is given by VDS by the length of the channel another one is a vertical one which is given by VGS by thickness oxide with this basics we are all set to start so let's find the total charge in the inversion layer which is given by Q1Y this charge Q1Y will find out for Y equal to 0 and Y equal to L and then see what's going to happen so let's find the general equation for this first so let's write the general equation the charge in the channel is nothing but electrons so it's a negative charge so first we'll put a minus sign the capacitance is nothing but oxide capacitance so it's cox into the voltage now voltage would be nothing but the total voltage to turn on the transistor which is nothing but vgs minus the voltage which is constant across the channel which we just saw in the previous clip which is nothing but vto minus the voltage which will be actually present at each and every node on the channel which is nothing but VCY. I'm trying to find out how much voltage would I have in total to multiply this with this capacitance to find the total charge which is nothing but VGS minus VTO minus VCY constant at different nodes on the channel and required for the transistor to turn on. So let's see what is the value of Q1 at Y equal to 0 y equal to 0 is nothing but the source so at that point of time we saw that vs was equal to 0 vcy is nothing but vc at y equal to 0 which is nothing but vs which is 0 so this is nothing but vgs minus vto at y equal to l this is nothing but y equal to l is nothing but at drain we have already seen that that voltage is nothing but vds we have seen this in the previous clip vgs minus sorry in the previous slide minus vto minus vds now we know that at y equal to L, if the saturation has taken place, then we need to find out what is the equation of the voltage or what is the voltage present on the channel and what is the total charge. Okay. What is the voltage on the channel when saturation takes place at saturation and what will be the total charge 
in the channel during saturation these are the two things which you are concerned with so at saturation we know that my vds is equal to vd sat which is equal to vgs minus vt so the total charge would be nothing but substituting this value of vds in this equation at y equal to l which will give me minus cox into 0 which is nothing but equal to 0 so my total charge at the drain end becomes 0 it's not exactly equal to 0 but as an approximation we can see that the total charge at length l is approximately equal to 0 and my channel is pinched off so that's where we get the shape of our channel as something like this which we have already understood now if we keep on increasing my VDS beyond VDS sat what's going to happen so let's keep on increasing my VDS beyond VD sat we know that my channel will keep on shifting towards the left or the pinch off point will keep on shifting towards the left correct now the voltage of the channel when the pinch off took place and when it's shifting towards the left it's not going to change so let's say now my channel has moved towards the left and it's moved to a new point now this is my new point where the channel is present up to which I'm calling it as L dash and my actual channel was L so there is a difference of delta L between L and L dash which will come to very shortly but when the pinch off took place the voltage at this point was nothing but VD sat does everyone agree because it is nothing but the drain voltage and the drain voltage at which pinch off took place was nothing but VD sat and even if the channel pinches off and moves towards the left the voltage here will still remain to be equal to VD sat let's quickly go ahead and do that so voltage at y equal to L dash is nothing but VD sat now here comes a very interesting thing for us to understand that when the pinch off point moves from the drain end of the channel towards the source with the increasing drain to source voltage what we find out is the remaining part of the channel between the pinch off point and the drain will be completely in the depletion mode now what is this let's understand see initially the channel was present completely now the channel pinches off and is up till here so this here there is still a channel but the part present here is depleted or depletion region is formed because there is no charge there is no channel present we just saw q1 equal to zero there correct there is no channel present and we also saw the voltage of the channel here is nothing but vd sat now the interesting thing what needs to be understood is the electrons can still flow from source to the channel but how does the current flow because here the channel is broken off and we have already discussed that the current will flow only when the channel is present so how does the electrons move in this direction the electrons move in this direction due to the presence of the electric field which is generated and this electric field is nothing but lateral electric field so now going back here now here is where you should be interested in what's happening to id due to channel and modulation let's quickly understand my channel has reduced now so let's write the equation of the channel mu n cox by 2 w by l dash it's not going to be l now by l dash vgs minus vto the whole square now we already know that from the diagram l dash is equal to l minus delta l because this is my l dash this is my l and this difference is delta l so l dash is equal to total l minus delta l which will give me l dash correct so I can just put this in the equation back and rearrange the terms so that will give me id sat equal to see what I'm doing here is I am trying to get my equation in terms of l mu n cox by 2 w by l vgs minus vt over the whole square in order to do this I have to do some mathematics which is very simple but nothing but 1 upon 1 minus delta l by l so I have substituted L dash as L minus delta L then I have made the rearranging of terms and I have got this as my value now this is nothing but our equation of the current in saturation region with an additional term which is present here so we need to investigate this term a bit more detail so we can easily show this and it can be proved that shortening of the channel delta L is actually proportional to square root of vds minus vds sat this can be easily proved currently it's beyond the scope so we are not going into that 
Now we'll use an empirical relation between delta L and drain to source voltage. So that's nothing but 1 minus delta L by L is equal to or approximately equal to 1 minus lambda VDS. This again, we are not going into the details. We are just simplifying our analysis and following an empirical relation where lambda is nothing but channel length modulation coefficient. Remember that. And if we assume that lambda VDS is far, far, far less than 1, then I can easily write the equation of my current in saturation region as nothing but ID sat equal to mu n COX by 2 W by L VGS minus VT the whole square because it's very less I can take it up and multiply 1 plus lambda VDS this shows that due to channel length modulation my current increases by a parameter of 1 plus lambda VDS which is nothing but shown in the graph here so this was my constant current constant current constant current when lambda was equal to 0 or when we neglected channel and modulation but due to channel and modulation if you see my current has increased and this is nothing but channel and modulation i hope you have followed stay tuned for further clips and thank you very much